In this video, I am going to show you how to use the switch function in Google Sheets. What the switch function does is it allows you to create a switch statement in your spreadsheet. This function works similar to nesting multiple if statements together, however, it's much easier. So basically, what the switch function does is you can take an expression and test it against a list of cases. And then when it matches one of your cases, you will return a value that you input into the formula. And so to explain what this means, um, this will make more sense when I show you how to use it, but let's take a look at the syntax. So this is the syntax of the switch function in Google Sheets. So the first argument of the function is the expression. And this is any value or expression. This is what will be tested against each case for a match. The next argument of the function is case one. And this is the first case that the expression will be checked against. The next argument is value one. And this is the value that will be returned if case one matches the expression. So basically what this function does is I have an expression here as the first argument. And what is going to happen is the function is gonna check case one to see if it matches the expression. If case one does match the expression, then we will return value one. The next arguments of the function are all optional. You can continue to provide additional cases and additional values to return if case, this case is a match for the expression. And so the last argument of the function, um, this is, will, is what will be returned if there are no matching cases from the values that you are testing. And so this is an optional argument. If you leave it out and there's no matching cases, you're gonna return an NA error. So what this function does is I have an expression here and I'm gonna to check to see if this expression matches this case. If it does match, return this value. If it doesn't match, we continue to test additional cases. And so you can continue to provide additional cases. And when it finds a match, it's going to stop and return the corresponding value unless there are no matches, at which point it'll return an N error or the argument you provide here as the default argument. And so this will make more sense once I show you how to use it. So in this example, I have these different expressions here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check these expressions to see if it matches these cases. If it does match, then we will return the corresponding value for the case. So what I'm going to do here is type in this cell equals switch. So the first thing is my expression. So this is what I'm testing. I'm testing this value to see if it matches this case. And I'm going to lock this um, cell reference by pressing F4 on my keyboard. Then what I'm going to do is put in the value to return if this is a match for my expression, which is in this cell in my example. And so I'll also press F4. I'm going to lock all these cell references because this is where my cases and values are. So for every argument I put in this function from here on out, I'm going to be locking the formula by having these dollar signs um, around the row and the column. And so you can press F4 to do that, or you can put the dollar signs in manually. But let's continue on with the function. So I'm gonna test the value in cell D2 to see if it matches A2. If it is a match, we return this value. If it's not a match, now let's test it to see if it matches this value. If it is a match, we return this value. If it's not a match, let's continue on and test it to see if it matches this value. And if that is a match, we will return this value. So I will close out the formula and press enter. So you can see what's happening here is it's testing the value in D2 to see if it matches A2, and since it is a match, we return the value in B2. 
So this one returns poor. And so what's happening here is we're testing the value in D3, which is one against A2. It's not a match. So now we skip to testing this against the case in A3, which is two. It's not a match. So now we skip to testing this against the value in A4. It is a match. So we've returned the value that corresponds with this, which is poor. Now this one returns an NA error because there is no match. None of these cases match this expression. So there's an NA error. If you want to provide the function with the optional default argument that will return a value if there are no matches, you would put that at the end of the formula. So let's say if there are no matching cases, what I'll do is not a valid rating. And you can see that is what is returned now because none of these cases match this expression. So this is not a valid rating. So that is the switch function in Google Sheets. Again, it's kind of similar to nesting multiple if statements together, but it is much easier to use. However, there is one drawback. So by nesting if statements, you can do logical expressions. So as your cases, you can do less than or greater than. That does not work with the switch function. So if you need to do logical expressions, you will still have to use if. But that is it for this video. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or content suggestions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer everyone.